Building a shower with a bench seat and a knee wall. Here's how to make it look professional. i show you how to install sills and the bench seat to perfection. Okay, so when you're doing a shower, like this one here, you got the walls all prepped, I got the floor prepped, and I got some stuff on the bench seat. This is actually the material for the bench seat. It's it's a marble. You have a couple of options on how to cover the seat, the knee wall, and the curb. Uh, one of the options obviously is tile. I didn't want to install a solid surface like I'm doing here. This solid surface is actually going to match the vanity which isn't here yet but it's the same material. So all these are going to match the vanity. And he, these are the, the sills over here that I'm going to be installing over here on the curb and the knee wall. So what are the options? A lot of times uh, you can just get the tile and it, you know, cut the tile, cut the tile to width, and install your tile on the on the you know on these transitions here, on these on the knee wall and the curb and the bench seat, and then you have to polish or you have to finish. You're gonna have to finish the edge of the tile so it's nice and clean. Curb is like 31 across, and the knee wall is about 32 high, and it's just over. 36 inches from there to here. Put your tile on. Put the put the grout lines where they need to be. If you had a 12 by 24 inch tile, for example, you probably put one grout line in the center here, and then you know one grout line in the in the center here. And on the bench seat, you would you would also put put you know a couple of tiles. They wouldn't be wide enough, so you you would have to decide which way you're going to run them. So these are actually going to be vertical, these tiles, 36 inches a long way, so you'd probably have the grout lines match with the back wall. Um, to, you know, you've got, you've got some options on how to do it with the tile. You would do the best, best layout that looks the best. The other option is to use a solid surface, and I actually think that's a better option because you don't have any grout lines you can get the material if you're doing the whole bathroom you can get the material your, your, you know your curb material and your bench seat material to match the vanity top and it's it's a nicer look so these this bench seat for example has a rounded front edge and then these are just the edges are just cut this is going to sit into the bench fit into the bench the curb here has one edge, both ends and both sides polished so that because it's going to be wider than the threshold over there, so then the curve over there. So you want the, the exposed edges to be all finished. Um, the sills here for the, the sills here for the, the top of the knee wall for the top of the knee wall and for the uh, going up. Uh, both sides are finished and they forgot to polish one end. So, because uh, the top piece here, the top piece that goes over here needs to be exposed. So that needs to be polished. So I'm gonna actually polish one of these ends so that the, the finish the finish will be the same as the polished ends. There's another option, you could miter these two to, to go around that curve, and that looks okay, but I kinda don't like that because that leaves a very thin material right at the corner there that is, you know, if you if you hit it with something is more susceptible to being damaged than a solid, solid piece. So I, I actually prefer to uh, polish these and have the, the, the whole thickness of the material instead of having it um, having it mited. I think it looks better. So, what does that mean? 
So the two ends that are going to protrude here are going to be, and the one end that's going to protrude here is going to be polished. The top piece is going to be polished, and then the other piece that comes up is going to butt up into that piece there. I'm going to show you all this in, in a little bit, but so <clears throat> you can do it that way. Another another way a lot of times people will do is they'll put the solid surface on the uh, on the curb, put the solid sur surface on the top of the knee wall, and then just wrap the vertical part with tile. I've done that many many times in fact that's most of the time how, how I do it but sometimes it's nice just to have solid surfaces around. The important thing is when you put these these on here these pieces on here you want to make sure that it overlaps so when your tile comes up it butts up against it and you have a little bit of a overhang and on the curb here see we're going to have a tile on this side and a tile on this side here in this case, he, he might the um, the GC might want to put um, that plastic uh, type baseboard material on the front here. In any in any case, it's going to be finished. You're going to need so you need it to overlap on both sides, so that when you install your your tile or your material on the other side, that it's covered by the 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 solid surface on the top. And I'll show you all this in a minute. So I'm going to be installing. The bench seat, the top, the side, and the the curb. Because this is so heavy, it's best to just install that, let it set so that it's hardened, and then install the next day. Install install these. The reason for that is because this is so heavy. When you you want this piece to be level, so when you put this piece on. You don't want that weight to make it like tilt up on this end here. You don't want it to make it tilt up. So you want to make sure that this, so you want to make sure that that is set before you put this on. Um, if you had, you could brace it on this side and do it that way, but you're going to be installing the whole, whole shower. And if you've got the time, I think it's just better to put that piece on, let it set, and then put these two pieces on. So today I'm going to be doing the bench seat and the curb and then I'm going to be flood testing the water. As you can see there's a little bit of water in there. I put that in there, there yesterday just to be sure that the the um, plug is not leaking. So you just put it into a certain height uh, that way I leave it overnight, I come back, if it's still at the exact same height that means that plug is not leaking at all and I can flood test the, uh, the shower floor. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to install this, this bench sheet, this curb, flood test, and then I'm going to go do something else. So I'm going to put a piece of cardboard down on the floor here. That way if I have to put, lean the seat on the membrane on the floor, I don't risk putting a hole in it because that's the bench seat is pretty heavy. So I'm going to test fit this first thing. See if it fits. The last thing you want to do is spread your thin set, go to put it in, and find out it's too big or it's too small. So just test for the first. Fits pretty good. So check it this way. It's actually pretty good that way. And then check it this way to see if it's level. And I actually don't want it to be level this way. I want it to be lifted up in the back a little bit so that it, it um, do any water that gets on the seat will drain down. So it's level. So what I'm gonna do, pull this out a little bit here. Get a couple of wedges. And then push it back up. And 
now it's up enough there. So when I spread the thin set, I'm gonna put the thin set in and put my wedges in the back. There's gonna be thin set on the back of this and then I'm gonna make sure I swish it down real good. That way that holds it in, in the right position. So let's check the cup. Same thing. A couple of wedges. Put one there. Put one there. That's good. Good like that. Okay, so I got this exactly right where it's going to be. I used the wedges underneath to get it right. And then once I put the thin set on, I'll, I'll, I'll adjust a little bit better. So this is tilted that way so water runs into the shower. And so when I install the tile here, I have to have enough room for the tile for this material to cover the edge of the tile. I don't want the tile sticking out beyond the sill. So I gotta make sure I need to leave enough room so that when I put my tile on, but this is gonna be like, this is a big tile, so like 36 by 12. I wanna make sure that I have enough room for the sill to cover the, the top of the tile on both sides. Here as well and then he's going to use some azac on the outside so I want it to be, want to be sure that there's enough on the other side here so that when he puts his azac on here it covers that as well once you've got that figured out, you want to make sure you mark it so that you know exactly where it goes because you have to pick it up. So I'm going to put like a little mark here, corresponds with that corner. I'll put a little mark here, put a little mark here, and a little mark here. So another way is to get a piece of foam or a piece of wood or whatever mark it down now I know that's completely right it might be different on this side actually it's pretty much the same. So now I have, I have two ways of checking to make sure it's perfectly in place. Mark the bottom side. Hey, if this is the first time seeing my videos, my name is Sal de Blasi. I'm a tile contractor in the Boston area. Been installing tile for over 35 years. My channel has almost 800 videos, pretty much all to do with tile. You will find pretty much anything you need to know and how to do it on my channel with regards to tile. Check me out on Patreon. If you can support me there, that would be fantastic. And leave your comments in the comment section. I will leave 
some links in the description, in the cards, and in the end screens. Tools that I use listed there, as well as other stuff. Most of all, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot. So I'm approaching 50 million views. So I'm going to be doing a giveaway, a substantial giveaway, when I get to 50 million views. So stay tuned. Keep checking back for that giveaway. So I'm actually going to go the long way because I can move the bench like this. I can't move it like that. going to be thin set oozing out from under here. Well actually not much at all. So you want to make sure you clean that up. There's a little bit there. Clean that up. Thank you. 
Okay, let's put it on. Clean this up. Time for a blood test. Okay, so it's the next day. This is all set. This is set. Now I'm gonna put 
first the vertical on then I'm gonna put the top piece on and the reason I'm doing that because I have to get this perfectly plumb you can see is a little bit out I want it to be perfectly plumb so that means I have to kick it out a little bit on the bottom and then once I have this piece on I'll be able to to see exactly what the dimension from here to here is. So I'm going to put this on, then I'm going to put, so I'm going to put this on, then I'm going to put this on. Okay, so I polished that in there, and I'll link the video on how to do that in the description. Okay, so I'm going to put this one on here. Just like this round. Check to see. So I'm gonna adjust this. So right now it's a little bit high here. So I'm gonna put a couple of shims, these little shims under here. Like that, I'm perfectly plump. And it's coming, it's tilting this way a little bit, and that's exactly what I want. So now I can take my measurement from over here down, get this piece cut, and I can then I'll cut this piece here. Okay, so, so I got this perfectly the way I want it, and it's correct this way. Remember this, this little, remember this little piece of curly board that I had marked. Put the threshold down here. I'm going to use this to get this perfectly in place. Which it is now. And that means when I put my level across here, I should be perfectly plumb. Which I am. So now, this is in place. Now I need to cut the cut the length. Now I need to cut this piece. So I cut a piece. There's a couple of ways of doing this. You could just measure it. You could just measure and mark it. Or you could do it this way. I cut a piece of turning board. This could be a key piece of cardboard if you want. I cut it the exact width. And put it. I'm just going to hold it in place. Just gonna need something that's the same width. It doesn't matter how wide this is. I'm just gonna use this piece here. You could use a trowel if you wanted to, or a piece of board, or even something like this. Actually, let's just use this. The markers here. Mark this here. Now I have the exact dimension from here to here. How do you transfer that? 
get this piece here, take it off. Probably a piece of cardboard would probably be better. So. Okay, since the comment had the radio blaring in the other room, uh, I couldn't use the audio from this video. So I'm just going to tell you what I did. So I'm checking to make sure it fits and that it's exactly what I need it to be. And then I'm going to move on to the top piece, measure that, and cut. So I positioned it exactly where it needs to be. Now I'm putting some tape on it so it stays in place and it doesn't move while I'm working on the piece above. So I need to preserve the polished edge. So I am going to flip it upside down, put the polished edge up against the wall, put it down, and then mark it while it's upside down. This way, the outside edge remains on the outside and the inside edge remains on the inside. So you get the correct uh, mark for the wall. If you were to just put the polished edge at the back wall without flipping it upside down, you wouldn't get the correct dimension because the outside edges wouldn't be in the correct position. So I cut the piece on the wet saw, and I'm gonna put it in position, make sure that it fits exactly how it's supposed to be. Once I'm happy with that, and I need, know that I don't need to make any adjustments, I'm going to cement everything down. Okay, so I'm going to put these on. Take them off, put them out of the way. Get this mark, this is the top. Thank you. 
So it's very important that you get the vertical plumb and the horizontal level on these sills. Because if you don't, that means when you go to put your tile up against it, you're going to have to cut it on an angle. So if it's if they're plumb and they're level, you just make a straight cut and it goes right in, no problems. You don't have to make any adjustments. So spend the time to make sure that you get these, the top, the side, and even the, the, the curb, make sure you get them all exactly level and plumb where they need to be. Once they're installed, you can't change it once the thin set is dried. So get it exactly right the first time. Double check your measurements when you're cutting them because these here, you only get one shot to cut them. If you cut them short, you can't make them longer. If you have to, uh, if you're not sure, cut them a little bit longer, you can always cut them again. Just don't cut them short because once they're cut, you can't glue a piece back on. So this is something that I always do when I put these sills on. I use some tape in strategic places to make sure everything is held in place and it doesn't move. Last thing you want to happen is for someone to come in and slightly bump it and move it out of place or for, the, for it to move while the thin set is drying. So take precautions, make sure you get it so when you come back it's going to be exactly where you left it the day before. Okay, so that's it. Sills are installed, in place, perfect fit, next tile.